Hello and welcome back to Cat and Veer. We have missed you. For those who aren't aware, we have done one episode of Meet the Dwarves, and as a result, the last video didn't have the actual gameplay, so it's been a few days since I've actually had the dwarves doing anything. So I'm quite eager to get back to this. However, there are a few things I want to quickly go over before we actually start uh, the simulation running, if you will. I've made a change to the burrow. I've done this primarily to make this into a sort of a, a, a bunker, well that's why I've named it bunker, in the event of an attack, rather than having the dwarves able to walk around this entire area, what I've done is this will be a place that I can send the dwarves just to retreat out of harm's way whilst the military try to deal with whatever threat exists. This is a very simple burrow at the moment and later on we are going to be changing this whole thing and, and this sort of emergency burrow will be inside the fort in fact later on I, I plan on not having many dwarves have to leave the fort at all ever so it's not going to be as necessary to have one of these emergency burrows now as i said in the last gameplay episode which i think was episode seven i would like to actually get our military set up and military can be a little bit complicated military settings in dwarf fortress are extremely versatile but with that versatility comes a certain amount of impenetrability early on so I will try to cover some things that people might have issue getting through and, and understanding how they could use it because you can use it in a very brute force kind of clumsy way but miss out on a lot of the flexibility that the system offers so I'm gonna try and cover as much of that as I as I think possible now then, the first thing you need, and what I've already done off screen, because I had to actually look through my dwarves at length to find the best person for this, we need a military commander. Now, I was initially going to go for Spartan, out of Spartan, Para, and Texfa, just because of the name. But as it turns out, Texfa has very, very similar um, traits that make him a good military commander. Um, but also, he, above all, is a better teacher than he is a student, whereas Spartan is an alright student and a, you know, a decent teacher. So I've chosen Texworth to be the commander because he's the most leadery of the two and the less likely to be able to learn from someone else. So that, that was my main reasoning. Otherwise, Spartan and Texworth are quite equally matched. Para doesn't really have very good skills in the sort of learning things regard at all so unfortunately yes para is probably going to end up doing a lot of sparring or self-teaching rather than attending combat drills led by the commander now you need a commander for every squad you can't just throw a squad together though you can let the game automatically pick the commander out the first person you enter into the squad but i, I like to do it this way now we've got a military commander you only ever have one of those in your fort, but for every other squad now we'll have a military captain, and you need to, to define one for each squad that you're going to create, and th that's all I'm going to touch on for now. They don't have any particular needs, they don't need an office or anything like that, though I'll probably make text for a, a little office at some point. But for now, let's head to the squad. Now, there's a lot of stuff in here. We can create a squad. We can have a look at the alert setting, and I'll cover that first, just briefly. Alerts are quite important in, in this. They, they govern quite a lot of things. Currently, we've only got one squad, and that's the civilian squad, as noted by the uh, civ in square brackets. And they're currently inactive, which means they're pursuing their civilian roles. So our civilians are just doing what they need to do. The other alerts that we've got are active and training. Uh, or rather active slash training that is a single alert this is the one that our military is going to be using for now until i actually make a couple of alerts specific to uh, certain situations what this one will be used for is literally just having our military training for the whole year we have one borough which is bunker now what we could do is we could restrict our civilians to bunker should a siege happen or anything like that, I will be restricting them to bunker, which will mean all of our civilians will pour into that tiny little burrow in the rooms furthest away from any possible combat, while our military tried to deal with any potential threat. But alert is the really big thing here. You can make as many as you want. You, you could literally have an alert system that, that ran off, I don't know, the sort of Americanized DEFCON system. Um, 
and what you could have there is an alert for peacetime where your military is just purely training an alert for well there's some stuff happening we, we're not sure when we're maybe suspicious that the, it's been a while since the last attack so you have your dwarves patrolling certain areas you could have an alert for a time where you think oh there's going to be a migrant wave soon or they we're due a trader and you have your um military patrolling certain highly likely areas for the military uh, for the trader or the migrants to come from you can do all sorts of things like that you can have alerts for any type of this is a different kind of situation i need my military to deal to be acting in a very specific way during this situation that, that's what alerts are for and that ties in very heavily with schedule i'll cover that in a moment the rest of the stuff uh, if you look at the bottom we've got equipment uniform supplies ammunition that's mostly used for actually equipping and dealing specifically with a squad so we're not going to touch on that until we've actually got a squad so press p for positions and now we want to create a squad uh we can choose from a bunch of uniforms we've got basic choices these are created in the uniform screen now one thing to be aware of with this these are templates much like in Nomoria, you create a uniform, but in Nomoria you create a uniform for a, and then you like assign it to a role, and then you assign that role to a position in a squad. And here, these uniforms are, are can be uh, applied to an entire squad, which by the way can contain up to ten dwarves. We're going to go with leather right now because we definitely don't have metal, and leather is most likely for us to get to sooner. So we'll choose that. Texford is automatically the commander because he's the only person who could be. And let's see. I don't like the fact that it's constantly uh, wigging out here and uh, messing up the text, but there's not much I can do about that. Now, we need to apply the rest of our military. So, Para, you're going to be in there, but I'm going to put Spartan second in the list. Where are you, Spartan? There you are. And Para, let's find you. There we go. That's my first squad. So, we've got Texva, Spartan, and Para. Now, if we go back over. They are the Everlasting Stockades. That sounds like a pretty good name, honestly. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to name it myself. No, that's good enough. We can disband them. We can create the squad appointed by this leader. Hmm. Not sure what that is. Uh, let's have a look at that. Press I. Oh, is that an L? It's an L. Oh, okay. Never mind. That is just literally to create a new squad. That's fair enough. So we've got one squad, three soldiers three of ten wrestlers it's because they don't have well i'm surprised that they set as wrestlers rather than swords axe and all that sort of stuff but uh, we're going to be changing that so we now want to actually i'll quickly go to uniforms just so you can see what we've got you've got these different uniforms archer which is all leather um individual choice of ranged weapon they carry a shield or a buckler um metal armor individual choice of melee and leather armor individual choice of melee you can delete the uniforms you can add new ones you can rename them you can tell them what type of armor to wear legs helm gloves boots shields weapons material color now these are things that you don't get in uh, no more i guess you get material a little bit but you can you can specify down to the color and as you've seen before when i was talking about dimple uh, caps you can dye things so i could say you can wear any type of leather armor that is black over you know you could make it a, a, like a cloak that's black so they could choose a spider silk cloak as long as it's black or i don't know a leather cloak as long as it's black or whatever you can you can specify the color of metal um an interesting note a pearl i think and shell or is it bone and shell are considered white metals so if you're wondering how to get those to be equipped Go for white metal on that one. You can tell them whether to use exact matches or not. So partial matches will just be like, oh, well, you know, the nearest to this whole setup, if you can. Um, Overclothing means that they'll wear it on top of their current clothing. Replace clothing means they'll wear it instead of their current clothing. Now, that's quite important because if they're wearing a lot of clothing items then when they're putting this armor on top of their clothing it might require that they take something off first because they've got so much on already that will cause a lot of annoying spam with people having to go and pick that up and go carry it away somewhere and i will tend to once i've actually got enough to make a full uniform i'll specify everything they're meant to wear down to the socks it'll be sort of fight club style got black socks black pants black underwear 
black shirt. Yeah, you know, I might not make them all wear black, <clears throat> but uh, I will be quite specific in what they're meant to wear as part of their uniform, you know, because they're in the military. They're, they're representing us. They must look awesome. Now, that's how you'd set up a uniform. I'm not going to be doing that just yet. So let's get back out of this so positions, and we want the everlasting stockade. And let's see. Let's go to equipment. Now, we can give people individual equipment if we particularly want to. But we want to give these guys very specific types of weapons. Now, I don't remember off the top of my head who equipped what. So I'm just going to flick over to Dwarf Therapist and remind myself. And I'm back. So, Texver is our spear dwarf. So we want to find him a spear. So I've removed his individual choice weapon. And what I would like to give is a specific weapon. Well, a specific weapon is literally a specific weapon. So rather than grab a spear, it would be grab this spear. That's quite good if you've got a list of items. Um, I don't really want him to be using a training spear. So I'm going to just say spear. So that's going to be his thing. Spartan is our hammer dwarf. So we're going to remove this. And again, give him a hammer. Take that. And Para is our Axe Dwarf. So again, remove that individual and give it Battle Axe. I could be very specific again, say Steel Battle Axes only, but I'm not going to because if there is some confusion and someone's picked up the wrong thing, any Battle Axe is better than no Battle Axe. So just grab that. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I do apologize. I've got a bit of a frog in my throat today. If we go to Supplies... We can tell them that they're allowed to carry any drink, carry any food. Now, what I would like is carry water or carry any drink. Uh, whatever you can put in your backpack, really. Um, and the amount of food, you can tell them to carry quite a lot. And they'll, they'll basically bring this along in rations. If they've got backpacks or flasks, they'll carry drink and food with them. And although, one thing to be aware of, if they're on duty, this doesn't mean that they'll just stop on the spot for a moment, take a drink, or, or eat their meal from their backpack and carry on. They won't. They still need downtime in order to go and feed and, and water themselves, or, or booze themselves, as the case may be. However, having this stuff with them means that they, might, they won't have to run all the way back to the base camp or the food stockpile or whatever and have their food there. They can just stop where they are. Like, so for example, you've got them in the barracks training. They'll just stop in the barracks, have a quick uh, swig from their flask, you know, recover a little bit of stamina, and then just jump back into training or, or, or that sort of thing if they're out patrolling, similar sort of uh, idea with that. Now, ammunition, not something that we need. Hunters, by the way, take 100 bolts with them. Doesn't matter what, but they'll gather 100 bolts. You can tell what type of material they're allowed to use, all sorts of things. The Everlasting Stockades don't carry ammunition because we don't have any actual rangers with us, so we'll leave that. But now we go to schedule, and this is the big thing. This is there's basically a difference between how you use your, your military. You can either have them be active or passive. Active military will act like they did in Nomoria, where you give them an attack order and they'll go try to kill that thing. Um, here you can give them move orders or attack orders, and on the way to the thing they'll try and kill anything that they think they should be killing. And once they get there, they'll try and kill everything nearby the thing that they, wh wherever you told them to go or what they, you told them to kill. The only problem with this is it's more or less a commitment. Once you've told them to go and attack it, that's it. They're not coming back until they're dead or it's dead. With schedules, you can be a little bit more clever with the way you do it. You can have patrol routes, you can have stations, and this is by month. You can set it up very, very well. Like, right now, I'm going to be leaving it at train all the year through. But you could have it, so, for example, merchants will arrive in certain months, so in those certain months, they'll go and start patrolling routes. And this could all... and this can all be based on sort of, like, alert levels. Each alert level has its own schedule. For every single month so really be aware of this you can do quite a lot of things and I'll just give you a quick look at how you do this with editing the orders uh, we've currently got train you can increase or decrease the minimum amount of soldiers there let's go oh we've got them defending the burrow now how this works is if there's any enemies in the burrow that they're defending 
the soldiers will be alerted and will try to collapse on that enemy. So from wherever they are, they'll just know that there's someone invading the burrow that they're meant to be guarding and they will rush there to try and defeat it. Patrol routes, as I said, they will move between various stations. Now routes here are set up with stations. You make an actual station location and a patrol route is literally one that moves between multiple stations in a cyclic order. Station means just stand at this station. So you could have a guardhouse and have them literally just stationed at the guardhouse. But we're going to be having them train. Now, the very important part with this is currently it's set to 10 soldiers minimum. Now, the minimum is how many people need to be fulfilling this, this activity. Obviously, we don't have 10 soldiers, but all three of them would be trying to do this. Now, there is a very, very good reason why you should always have this one to two lower than your, the m total amount of people in your squad. is because even with training, you know, much less patrolling or, or, or actually doing something actively, like being stationed somewhere, they will drive themselves to the point of starting to starve or die of thirst. They will then stop and drink and eat, but they'll have really bad negative thoughts because of getting that hungry or that thirsty, but they will drive themselves to that point whilst trying to fulfill your orders. So what I'm going to say is that at any one time, two soldiers must be training. Now this is good because it'll mean that they will probably spar. I don't think they'll do any sort of exercises where they sit down and, and get taught because that can happen someone can lead a training exercise and someone will uh, and the others will just sit sit around and watch them someone with a high skill in that particular field will impart that skill and they'll gain get better at becoming a, being a teacher the others will get better at the skill that they're teaching and also at being a student so that further teachings will be more um, effective but that probably won't happen with two two people being um, training at a time. It'll probably be sparring, which, you know, is all right. At lower levels, that's actually more effective anyway. But what this will mean is that at any one time whilst training, which is going to be all year, one of the dwarves can slip away. They, they'll be like, right, okay, I'm going to go get some food, uh, maybe a bit of sleep, be back in a few, and they'll slip off. And then they'll come back, and then someone else will go away. And so they'll be rotating like that. And, and fulfilling their needs as and when they have them, which is extremely, extremely important if you don't want them to eventually become so pissed off with you that they throw a tantrum and then kill everyone. Because your, your military dwarves are the ones you absolutely never can ever afford to be tantruming. Because that's just bad times. Bad, bad times. Now, as you can see, we can move through these. Now, Although I've changed Granite, that hasn't changed Slate, Felsite, or any of the other months. So what you can do, because you can end up having to do quite a lot with this, we want to copy. So we're going to press C, we're copying this one, and now we're going to press P to paste to each one down this list. There we are. Now that's nice and easy. Now, the other things that we can do, we can view the alerts. So this is inactive. On inactive, they're not doing anything. This is active training. On active training, they're training. All stands to reason. Later on, it'll be we'll be doing a lot more. Now, with you inactive equals uniformed, that means that if they were standing down and not doing anything, they'd get out of their armor and into their civvies. You can press U to allow that, but I prefer to keep it. Unless I'm literally... Because I don't tend to have my military ever stand down and do civilian roles. Um, that might be useful if you had a very small military and a very small population. So you actually really did need to, your military to kind of do double roles. But usually my military is my military and that's all they do. Um, also, one thing to note is that if your military is forced to stand down, and that is take on civilian roles, but doesn't have at least level one in any civilian skill, they'll be unhappy about it. Because they're soldiers. Why are they going to trend farms that they don't even know how to tend? The same is true of civilians. If civilians, without any skill in military, in weapons or anything like that at all, are forced into the military, they'll be a bit pissed off. They're like, well, I'm a farmer. I'm, I'm not a Spartan. What the hell am I doing here? I don't know how to put this helmet on. Trust me, doors are stupid. But uh, 
that's the, the, the main thing about schedules. It's extremely, extremely useful, and I will be using these extensively later on. I've already spent 20 minutes covering the military, so I'm not going to go into it too much right now, and the only thing I really want them doing is training. But later on, when we've got a bit, bit, bit of a bigger fortress, I will be using this a lot. Same with burrows. Now, we can name the cells, because currently they're, they're named training. That has nothing to do with the fact that they're actually training. I could change this to defend burrows and it would still say train. You actually have to name the cells. But that's good because you can give them quite descriptive names. Um, sleeping rooms at will. Sleeping barracks at will. Sleeping barracks at need. Sleeping rooms at will. This just dictates when they're allowed to step away and, and go to sleep. I tend to let them sleep at will and sleep in their own rooms. But when you've got a really... A much bigger fort with a dedicated barracks which has beds and things like that, I will swap it to barracks and in times especially right now because i'm fairly sure that this, this is uh as you see it's monthly you can set it based on different things so if for example you were in a higher state of alert have them sleeping in the barracks at need or having them just sleep in the barracks when it's a little bit more important that they be close to their weapons should shit go down you know bear that in mind you can set that up but that is it for our schedule there so we're gonna exit out of that now they should be set up with that that should be the schedule that they've got let me just double check yes yes everlasting stockade okay right that's our military set up so now the one thing we've got to do before they can actually start training we need to do that ah, it's already been assigned i believe has it been assigned can i no no I think it's been assigned. <laughs> it's showing up in here, which I can only imagine is a good thing. Um, the, ah, right, there we are. I'm telling which units are allowed to use it. The plus and minus, um, asterisk and divide symbol can allow me to move through the list of squads that I've got. So multiple squads can use the same barracks. I'm currently saying, look, you're allowed to use this place for training, and you're allowed to use it to store your squad equipment. And that should be all we need to do. Let's unpull. Oh. oh, panic then. I forgot Avak was still in an out in a meeting with the outpost liaison. My, they've been talking for a long time. Right. Well, they've finalised the export agreement, and we are free to look over the documents, which we shall do. All right. Let's have a look at the greens. They're the important ones. They want spears. They also want, I think, armor and drinks. It's a little bit hard to see because there's another line across it. Yeah. Seeds and drinks, I believe they are. Though, wow. Armor is 191. Tanned hides, 192. Cut jet windows. They want to buy windows off us. Very well. Backpacks, cloth, footwear, leather water skins. Okay. Seeds, not too bad, actually. And drinks, kind of. I don't tend to sell drinks. Drinks are something that's quite important, but... Uh, Seeds, you'll end up drowning in seeds after a while. So, yeah, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, is my military going off to do their things? I would love it if they were. Let's just double check. Where are you and what are you doing, military? Go to individual combat drill. Well done, Spartan. Where's Texfa and Para? Texfa, drink. Ugh. This is not starting well. Ah, oh, you're both drinking. Boozing on the job. Right, farewell, Avak. I look forward to our meeting next year. Our fortunes rise and fall together. Indeed they do. Take care. Don't get killed on your way out, because the Dwarf Homelands will blame me. Right. Hunt has been cancelled. No ammunition. Well, sod it. Let's get some more ammunition then, shall we? Where are you? You're making wooden bolts still. Okay, well, you can stick with that. Right then. I've also, whilst you were gone taken care of a few things namely added all of these areas so uh, I wasn't doing that on the screen but they have been set now actually there's one other thing that I haven't actually touched on yet there should be something to do with animals in here let's have a quick look units noble status um, hmm. stop files with burrows no unit list job list squads we can set a uh, things like that we can directly give them attack orders as i mentioned before and movement orders i will probably be using this a little bit to start with but later on i won't be using that at all hopefully i'll have uh, 
their passive scheduled tasks set to deal with that. The, this is what I think we need. View civilizations. We are aware of two. The kobolds. This land has no important leaders. Oh, that's a shame for them. We haven't exported anything. <laughs> okay, export to Cadenvere. Petty annoyance. We export to them death. I like it. Okay, and then the homelands. So let's check them out. They've got a general administrator and a queen who's a farmer. Okay. How bizarre. We can have a look at that. So far, we've imported. Uh, sorry, they've imported 354 worth and have received an offering of 60 from us that's not too bad at all but what i'm really looking for is a screen which shows us which animals we can deal with is there oh overall training here we are that's what i wanted now it used to be that you were very limited in which animals you could train that has changed in this now your race, your, your civilization, the one that you've come from, has a basic knowledge about animals they can train. And you can learn to train new ones. It used to be that you'd need a specific noble, the dungeon master, to train anything other than dogs, more or less. Because they could train exotic war animals or hunting animals. But now we have a knowledge of these things. We've got domesticated animals. We've got general familiarity with, for example, cave crocodiles. We have a general familiarity with cave crocodiles. Eventually, we could domesticate them. Eventually, we could make them into war cave crocodiles. We could make them into hunting cave crocodiles, so on and so forth. There's loads of things. And you can... Pretty much any animal that I... As I understand it, you can learn to train. It's quite dangerous to, to learn to train a very wild and aggressive animal, but you can do it with enough time. And the interesting thing is, is this information, as the liaison comes and goes, will gradually seep back to the starting civilization. So if we, as a fort, Kettenvia, learn to tame cave crocodiles really well, gradually our founding civilization will gain some of that knowledge through osmosis. And um, if we were then... this fort fell and we started a new fort from the same uh, civilization, they would have that, that knowledge. They would have at least whatever our main civilization had learned from us, which is quite useful to know. We will want to set up some training at some point. Um, probably as soon as that puppy has grown up into a dog, we'll actually set up a proper training ground and have them doing things. Now, we see that there are a couple of people Individual combat drills. Okay, well, you know, they, they're getting better, and that's the main thing. Spartan's off doing something else, probably. What are you doing? No job. Oh, well. Chill out, Spartan. You've earned it. You were the first one to actually respond to the order. But I do want to check that they are equipped properly. So, what have you got? Um, let's go to inventory. You've got trousers, llama dress, silk coat. Bobcat leather coat, cap, hood, left glove, mitten, right glove, right mitten, socks, shoes, socks, shoes. I've, really, have you not got your weapon? Have I not made your weapon? I'm going to have to check this. Copper spear. Well done. Let's actually check that copper spear because it looks good. It's got uh, the quality modifier. This is a superior quality copper spear. Well done, Plump. Well done indeed. Where's Spartan? Here we are. You've got a silver war hammer. Hmm. Good, good times. Let's just check. Why haven't you got... Why hasn't Para got their axe? Have we got an axe? We've got a copper axe. Steel axe is being used, I believe. Oh. Hmm. Why is that forbidden? Let me find where that is. Zoom to this item. Oh. It's on an axe dwarf. Is he dead? Because, hmm. Okay, it's a bit odd, but okay. I'm not sure what's happening there or why I can unforbid his stuff. Um, let's just use K. No, he is still there. Hmm. Okay, well, you you can stay there, I suppose. But we need to find out why Para isn't equipping her weapons then. Because that is a bit of a problem. So we've got plenty of 
axes. Uh, we've got a copper axe, a steel battle axe. Any others? No. We only got one then. Oh, two, sorry. Because I believe we've got two woodworkers. That would possibly explain the issue. Okay, it looks like we do not have... No, yeah, we don't have enough because there's two steel battle axes, but one of them is being used. So, Metalsmith's Forge it is. We want a copper battle axe. To work, Plump. The military needs your expertise. Where are you? Plump, come on. You notice that they sometimes stop in the middle of the hall when people pass them? It's As I touched on in the very beginning of the uh, Let's Play, it's because someone is lying down so the other one can cross over them. Yeah, there is a reason why these halls are enormous. It's so that we don't have to deal with that crap all the time. Where the hell is Plump? Gave him a simple order. Did it have to be cancelled? Yes, it did. Damn it. Okay, let's have a look. What happened there? I don't know. Well, it hasn't been cancelled, has it? Hmm. Perhaps I didn't add it properly. Well, add it again and see what happens. Oh, no, it's still there. Hmm. I can only hope that Plump eventually does this. But for now, it has been long over to you. Let us get back to hauling, hollowing out the holes. And it looks like only two more of these have been uh, are left to do. That's actually pretty cool. Hopefully, they get to that pretty quickly. Because once that's sorted, in fact, I think they're going up there now. Are you? Yes. Wonderful. Once that area is um, roofed over, I think we'll roof over this part, and then I'll build a wall around the perimeter. Just as a bit of a protection. In fact, I'll set that up now, and that'll be the last thing I do in this episode. Unfortunately, I did mention the risk that we might end up spending a whole episode dealing with the military it is as i said an important thing but it can be a little bit impenetrable because there's so many different choices with it so i i did want to really cover it properly uh no we don't have enough shale blocks so let's just start by here then because we can do the rest later on that's that one and then this one shell blocks okay we need a couple more shale blocks so I'll add those to the mason's workshop. Construct rock blocks. Uh, yeah, go on then. That'll do. But that is it for this episode. Unfortunately, as I said, it did get taken up almost entirely by military. But on the plus side, we now actually have a military that's training. In the next episode, we are going to be continuing with the mining down. Or up, as the case may be. I think I'll go up first before down. Eventually, though, I will be just sinking a staircase all the way down to the caverns, just so that we've got an underground place that we can start growing food. In the meantime, I think I'll also start looking into building some basic traps just outside along the perimeter here, just to uh, thin out any potential invaders so our tiny military has a bit more of a chance with dealing with them. But that will be for the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this one, as always, and I hope you will join us for the next. But until then, do take care.